Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And to everyone at home, we begin with a question from Tom Mooney. Colonel Callahan of the National Guard mentioned yesterday, Friday, establishing potentially 2,000 field hospital beds. Do you foresee using that many? I do. I do. And I want to make a point about that. We could, it's impossible today to predict exactly how many we need. Our mission is to prepare for the worst and work for the best. But I want you to think about this. In the past week, we've more than doubled our rate of hospitalizations. So were that to continue, you could imagine very quickly going from 97 to 2,000 or more. Now, it would, I'm not saying we will, although we have models that suggest it might get even quite a bit higher than that. So I'm mentioning this for two reasons. One. For those folks who still aren't serious in the way they're uh, interpreting the stay-at-home order, this isn't a joke. There will be thousands of people in the hospital in Rhode Island with coronavirus in the months to come. Whether that number is 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, depends on whether the people of Rhode Island continue to obey the social distancing rules, staying home if they're sick, washing their hands, et cetera. The other point I do want to make is uh, I don't want people to be surprised. This, is, this will happen. There's no scenario in which, in which a week from now we don't have many, many more cases to report. So you, I don't want, you shouldn't be surprised Many, many more people will be sick. Very sadly, many more people will die. And our hospitals will be overwhelmed. That's what we know will happen. But what I also know will happen is if we continue to meet the challenge of coronavirus with the same level of uh, sophistication and a comprehensive approach and aggressiveness and this 24-hour constant response, it's going to be much, much, much better than it would have been. And that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm just trying to protect, as, protect everyone as much as possible f from, the, from the downside that is coming our way. All balanced against my great desire to get people back to work. So this is kind of a Rubik's Cube of public policy that we're, we're trying to do here. Every time you change one thing, everything else changes, and we're just trying to keep it all together in balance, guided by data, facts, a willingness to be flexible, listening to experts, and focused on everyone's safety. Our next question is from Bill Bartholomew. Governor, have you considered waiving the typical fees and procedural standards for retired healthcare professionals that may want to step up and return to the workforce? Yeah. The answer is yes. In fact, on my to-do list this weekend is to go through a variety of executive orders related to um, a number of different regulatory changes that are going to have to be made. Wherever possible right now, I am trying to get rid of any kind of bureaucratic red tape to make to move things along we need to be moving fast although obviously keeping in mind that we can't waive everything because we have to keep everybody safe so short answer is yes also I'll take this as an opportunity to once again implore everybody in Rhode Island if you are a healthcare professional of any kind and you're not fully employed and you're willing to do more please let us know uh, riresponse.org if you're retired, please consider serving. There will be compensation for some of you, and we need the help. Like you just asked about the field hospital. It's one thing to find 2,000 hospital beds. It's another thing to find the staff to staff them. So I need you to answer this call. Steve Alquest of Uprise RI asks, parks, beaches, and recreation centers are closed. Golf courses remain open. Some on social media say this is a class issue, that rich people golf. Your thoughts? Uh, so it's a good question, and I'm going to continue to look at golf courses. At this point, how
taxi and Uber companies do not want to go to the test sites? Thank you, Tony. It's a terrific question. We are working really hard on coming up with a solution, and I hope that by tomorrow or the next day I have a more complete answer. We are working with RIPTA um, to make you know more public transportation available to the test sites, also working with the transportation providers who do business with Medicaid. So hang in there just a bit more. We're on it. In the meantime, uh, I would say, you know, re reach out to 211 because we are, social service agencies are providing rides. Um, you can call your local legislator. Um, I know a lot of the local legislators have said to me that they're helping their constituents with food delivery and rides. So if you could just get through the next couple of days relying on friends, family, and the United Way, I hope to have a more comprehensive response in a day or two. Kate Nagel is noticing, Governor, that you're not wearing a face mask or yeah. uh, face covering. Are you wearing one in public? Is your staff wearing face coverings? How about state and house employees? Yes, so we are. In fact, uh, I'm smiling because I thought about coming out here in a face covering but realized it would be very difficult to deliver a press conference. But the answer is absolutely. You know, last night, my husband, my kids, and I, we sat down. And we all got together our face coverings, and I absolutely plan on wearing them, as does my staff, as does Dr. Nicole Alexander Scott. So, uh, by the way, and I'm following all, all the rules. I have to come to work, so I do. But, um, you know, when we go to the grocery store, I go alone, I take one person, I stay far away from folks, washing my hands constantly. Nobody's above the rules in this one, including myself. Um, also, on the face coverings, we, we were reluctant, I'll be very honest, we were reluctant to give that guidance for a while because we don't want people to think that that's a magic bullet because it isn't. It might help a little, it might help somewhat, it might help for you to prevent giving somebody else the virus if you have it. But social distancing, staying home if you're sick, washing your hands constantly are every bit as important, if not more important. And, he, and if you are sick at all, slight fever, headache, tired, sniffles, do not think you can put your face, your cloth mask on and go outside. You still need to be staying home. Next question from Kathy Gregg of the Providence Journal. How many ICU beds in Rhode Island now? How many are occupied? When are new beds arriving? And are we paying the convention center to use it as a field hospital? So there are 180 total ICU beds, roughly, that are actively available. About 47 of them are vacant. The rest are occupied. Um, based on what the governor shared yesterday, there is work being done with certain localities to be able to stand them up, convention center being one of them, to um, set up as a hospital. I know we're learning it's more than just a field hospital um, from General Callahan, but we're looking to make sure it has the services that are needed. And to finish the question, are we paying the convention center to use it as a field hospital? So yes, we are paying the convention center along with the other two temporary sites. Um, we've been uh, grateful for the participation of the Quonset Development Corporation, which is a part of the Lowe's site, um, the landlord for the citizens facility and the convention center authority so that we're paying uh, a nominal fee so that we can have control of the site and have appropriate legal protections and have been negotiating leases with both the, the three sites along with all the relevant and associated vendors and fully expect that those funds will be reimbursed through the federal stimulus. Governor, the next question is from John DePietro. When did you learn the Patriots plane would deliver 100,000 masks to Rhode Island? Does the state need masks? You had said the state was receiving five to seven million. Where are they coming from? Yeah, so uh, since every day runs into the next, I, it was about a week ago, I talked to Governor Baker and the folks at, at, uh, at the Patriots and uh, arranged for us to receive 100,000 of those masks. We absolutely need more masks. We have about five million or so on order and they're coming from all over the place. The, the truth of it is I'm taking them from wherever I can get them. Many are coming direct from China. 
some were working with manufacturers uh, directly here in the states, uh, some of them through FEMA. So it's, uh, we have a, a broad supply chain that we're building and managing. And if you have a credible lead, you should let us know. We're, we're chasing down every lead that we can because like I've said before, it's a global fight. I'm in the fight every day with every other state and many other countries. And we'll, we need quality masks. We're not taking anything. We have a very rigorous system to check and make sure that everything is up to standards so that our healthcare providers are safe. But if, if anyone has a credible lead, we will chase it down. And I'd love to hear from you. Ryan Belmore of What's Up Newport asks, many of our readers are looking for a sign of hope. What statistics or information should Rhode Islanders be looking at for hope? To know we are all going to get through this, is there any good data, perhaps number recovered, that you and the Rhode Island Department of Health can share today? Yeah, so I'll answer that and then I'd like Nicole to answer it as well. Um, it is very hopeful that now we can test over 1,000 people a day. You know, two weeks ago, it wasn't at all clear that we'd be able to do that. We, at that time, were testing a few hundred people a day. The fact that we have done that so quickly should give you huge hope and confidence that we are that much closer to setting up a system where we can get back to life as normal, or new normal, and keep everybody safe. It should give you great hope, actually, to know that we have had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, uh, retired doctors and nurses offering to volunteer so that in the event if, if you do get sick or you need to go to the hospital we're gonna we got you covered we have a plan to have you covered um, it's also very hopeful that most young people and healthy people do just fine if they get the virus so you know breathe a sigh of relief around that and they are recovering and finally, it's very hopeful to know that all the things we're asking you to do, washing your hands, staying home if you're sick, et cetera, really do work. So uh, it, it's, there's a lot of hope. I am 100% confident someday soon things will be you know, more normal. It's not going to be the way it was. But we're on a path. We have a plan. We're on a path. We're in touch with how bad it'll be. But we, we also are prepared. And when I say we're going to take care of you, I mean it. It's not, it's not uh, optimism based on nothing. It's optimism based on a clear-eyed view of the facts and reality. So the governor did great at covering the majority of the data points that um, we are looking at daily and that we can share, including the number uh, recovered uh, that we're continuing to estimate. Um, I also want to emphasize what you can do in terms of positive data points for the people around you. Um, looking at those around you who are following the stay-at-home order. How many times are you able to help increase that number and confirming that people are staying at home? How many times are you seeing someone going to the grocery store for two, three, or four households so that only one person is leaving uh, the house? Uh, how many times are you seeing people make phone calls to those who are seniors or those with uh, differing abilities who have to stay at home? Those are also daily numbers that you can follow and keep track of for yourselves and for the people around you because every element of those numbers count in helping us overall as a state have the response that we will have. And then ultimately, we'll look forward to being able to share how many people we have been able to contact and to trace their contacts and help them be able to quarantine and stay at home the way we need to based on the number of cases as we're increasing those who are tested or engaging with those who have symptoms. So don't underestimate the importance of what the governor has asked before 
every day writing down who you have been in contact with so that if you um, get called you're already ready with a daily list of all of the people that you have contacted so we can accelerate our ability to do the contact tracing and really be pinpointed in our response in this epidemic. Governor, the next question is from Tara Granahan of WPRO Radio. Since President Trump's announcement, are there any companies making masks locally? Can we form a coalition or drive? Yeah, thank you. We do have some companies making um, what I would call a, a, a more simple mask. We don't have any of them making the N95 respirators, but uh, we have a few making masks. I think we have one making gowns and we're in touch with companies every day. It's, it is, it's not as simple as it sounds. Uh, they have to get the specs, they have to make sure they can get the right material, they have to retool the manufacturing operation, but the manufacturers have been phenomenal, phenomenally cooperative, and you know, it's something we're working at every day. Our last question for today's briefing is from Ron St. Pierre of WHJJ Radio. Mm -hmm. Vermont has ordered big box stores like Walmart and Target to stop selling non-essential items like toys and clothing, telling them to sell only essentials like food, beverage, and medicine to cut down on the store traffic. Would you consider a similar order in Rhode Island? Yeah, I wasn't aware of that, so I'm going to have to look into it. Um, as I've said so many times, I'm interested in outcomes here, so if I will, I will check that out. And if, and if they're getting good outcomes, which is to say many fewer people are visiting the store, then it is something that I would consider. Right now, we have, we have pretty good compliance. What I have done here is we've said we've put a strict limit on the number of people who can be in a store at any time, and we are enforcing that limit. Uh, and we, are, we have asked the employers, the big box companies, to impose social distancing mechanisms, you know, tape on the floor and whatnot, and they are doing a good job of it. This is back to my balance. I'm, I'm trying not to totally destroy our economy, and so I'll look at it. It's a, it's, I'll make a fact-based decision. I would ask employers, um, big box companies, uh, big grocery stores, to look around and see what else you could be doing to limit the number of people in an aisle at one time. For example, what is being done in some places and some other countries is only allowing traffic in an aisle to go in one direction. Those are the sorts of things that I, I need grocery stores and big box retailers to continue to think and innovate because uh, our, my ability to keep the store open depends on your willingness and ability to be creative around how you continue to keep people far enough apart when they're shopping. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Have a good day.